Hey everyone, I'm Richard, this is Grey Wizard Gaming, and I wanted to talk about feeding your gaming group without giving them junk food. So about a year ago, I decided I wanted to, to start a, a new gaming group where I have it kind of be like an open house and I didn't want people to have have to require either buying their own food, bringing their own food. And I definitely did not want to encourage people to eat junk food. So I do feel, I feel lucky that I can afford to do this, but I often think that, uh, I think I have my costs under control. That's pretty reasonable. I think it's very comparable to eating out, except mine's whole food and not junk food. So I want to talk about the kinds of things I choose and the kind of things I avoid. So my rule is that people should be able to show up, play games, have fun, and be, be satiated by what they eat. So my first rule is that I, I want at least one clean protein that isn't fried, isn't, um, isn't breaded, and in general would satisfy like a paleo diet. I feel like if I can, if I can satisfy that rule, then people can form the rest of their meal around it. And unless they're vegetarian or vegan, they're going to be happy. So number two, because people get off work at various times, then I have to have food that tastes close to as good when they show up, regardless whether they show up at 7 p.m. or 9 p.m., even 10 p.m. So it's cutting it there. I mean, definitely. But 7 to 9 p.m., the quality should be close to spot on. This is this was the experience that I tried to craft. Rule number three, it can't require any work any substantial work when people show up because when people show up is when I'm going to be setting up a game. That's when I'm going to be learning the rules. That's when I want to play a game and I want to be able to tell people, Hey, go get the food. It's in the kitchen. It's ready. Rule number four is the food should not remind anyone of a buffet experience. I don't like buffets. I grew up in Vegas. I ate buffets my entire life. I don't like them. And I feel like there's an experience of mediocrity that comes with that kind of food. I just don't like it. It might, you, I mean, obviously some people absolutely love casseroles and I guess big plates of trays of food. That's not me. I don't like it. And it doesn't usually it doesn't satisfy many paleo kind of diet things, which is a previous rule. All right. So what do I do? Well, I generally sous vide everything because I can prepare the food Saturday, Saturday night or Sunday morning, and it will be delicious. It will not be dry. It will not be overcooked and it will come out in some cases exactly the same whether or not they show up at seven or nine or again in some cases 10 or 11 because that's the nature of sous vide you can you can cook it very slowly very safely and you you don't, you don't ever dry it out. It never gets dried out. At most, it might get more tender than you want it to be. But I've never, I've never cooked it so long that that was a problem. It generally tastes better the longer it cooks. Um, I can cook vegetables in the sous vide. I can, I can cook, um, I can even cook desserts in the sous vide. I mean, there's a lot of options. I've done uh, New York style 
hot dog um, carts where I prepare a sous vide and I make a, a vinegar bath with cumin and it's just like a New York hot dog cart, but people are just reaching in. Uh, I use a, I use a, a gallon size Ziploc bag and they just pull out the hot dogs as, as they want to eat them. And it's amazing and delicious. And again, I don't have to put in really much work when people show up. Typically what I do is like today I have a brisket and I have a pork ribs. So I take those things out a couple hours before game and then I put a rub on them and I throw them in the smoker. Smoker is super easy. I just hit start and I throw in some water and some wood chips and it's done. Like an hour and a half later, I'll have this nice caramelized bark. And that's, um, it's just great. Honestly, it's a good, it's a good experience. Everyone loves it. It's delicious. I'll have, I'll put my recipe for my brisket down below. It's so easy and it's, and it's actually relatively cheap. It's expensive because they sell brisket in large portions, but it's cheap from a price per pound. And it's so moist this way and so delicious that I put it in brisket ramen. I put it in brisket pasta. I put it in brisket sandwiches. I, I just, I use this brisket on all kinds of different things. And depending on what I do with it changes the flavor. I I make brisket breakfast burritos. It is, it is really, really good. Um, the pork comes out amazing as well. I'm not a huge pork fan, but actually I eat a lot more pork just because it's so good. And in this case, I had a request from somebody's mom. Hey, can you make the pork ribs again? And I was like, okay, I, I guess, I guess I will. So there you go. Two, uh, two sous vides. I, I think the, the sous vide experience is really good. Um, desserts I make, I typically make, um, if I make a dessert, I'm going to make something that goes in the large baking sheet. It's people can cut out wedges. It's moist. Again, I'm just always trying to avoid dryness. So almost everything I do is to try to, to keep everything moist, keep it, um, not drying people out because I don't want people to just to like hit the soda. I I don't want people to feel like, I don't know. I I don't know that it's just something about if they're already prone to eating a lot of chips and a lot of things like that. So I really need to counterbalance that, make every, make sure everything has sauces, make sure everything has, um, tender, not overcooked textures to it and encourage them to lean towards that and not towards the junk food because we have the junk food too. We just don't, um, I don't want everyone to rely on it. So vegetables, vegetables are really hard. Honestly, like people are super picky. Gamers typically are pickier than normal with vegetables. I typically lean towards, um, something straightforward like green beans, because it's super easy to saute. I can, I can saute green beans in like less than three minutes. I can saute spinach in a few minutes. Um, typically green things that cook in just a few minutes. Well, the green beans, I, I typically steam for a few minutes and then I saute, um, broccoli or cauliflower. I can saute it. I can just pour a little orange juice or lemon juice with some ginger, like puree ginger. Uh, a little bit of garlic, salt and pepper. That tastes pretty good. Um, I, you know, I really, really recommend people try it, try to just serve some real food. What I notice is that when people come and they bring bags of food and pull out burgers and stuff like that, the, the group is cranky. A couple hours later, the group, they don't, they don't know why that they're cranky or somebody's like falling asleep in a corner like they don't know what's up but I fully believe it's the amount of sodium that is in this junk food 
and um, probably whatever other preservatives and, and colored dyes and stuff too. I mean, none of it is really good for your mental health, um, which is not to say I don't eat it. I, I mean, I, again, I love junk food, but it's just, um, it's not conducive to a fun night. Also, I think that encouraging real food at your gaming table gives people an opportunity to, to bring sides. So somebody brings these little cheesecakes or somebody brings these little like stuffed mushrooms and people love it and people feel good. And, you know, nobody, nobody except me necessarily wants to, to make a full big pile of meat. So only having to buy a few dollars worth of a side to make something delicious and getting those compliments, I just think it bonds everybody. And combine that with the fact that you don't even need to know how to cook to sous vide. It is a little pricey. I mean, if you haven't already bought pots and pans and stuff, you can get away with, with spending that money on the sous vide. Um, I have two sous vides, so you'll notice here that I have the more expensive sous vide that I can ask Alexa to like do things for me, and I have the cheaper sous vide. They actually both work pretty well. I like the more expensive sous vide, and I trust the more expensive sous vide um, Juul immersion cooker more if I'm going to cook. Like I actually have like a big giant bucket. I can cook like whole briskets. And I wouldn't trust the smaller sous vide because it has a smaller heating coil. But um, yeah, most of the time it's fine. So sous vide is great. I even prepare burgers. I prepare burgers just like this, just like this in little bags. And the burgers are perfectly cooked. 30 seconds on the grill. And I, I go ahead and set up the charcoal grill. Again, I don't want to do a lot of work when people show up. So right when people show up, I toss the burgers on that are already cooked, already fully cooked. You can eat everything out of the sous vide. And I just want color. This stuff comes out looking pink, you know, because it's medium rare edge to edge. So it comes out whatever color you wanted it to be edge to edge, which means generally, unless you wanted the inside to be crispy, it's not going to be crispy. It's going to be this color. So you've got to add some color because people want that color. Um, so I'll, I'll take burgers, put them in here, pull them out, you know, cut the bags, toss them on the grill and 30 seconds, one side, flip them, add cheese, 30 seconds done. Because again, it's just got to get some color. I generally add most of my seasoning after I take it out. I add salt, pepper, and garlic powder before I put it in. That's it. No fancy seasonings and everyone loves it. When I take it out, I do sometimes add some fancy seasoning, but it's not necessary. I'm just extra. So um, I'd love it if people want to share their favorite recipes for what they think is great, great food at your board game table. And uh, personally, I would really love, especially any of my European viewers, any of my Australian viewers, people, uh, people from wherever. I love cooking uh, Indian food. I cook a lot of Korean food. Um, I, I mean, I'm, I'm from Las Vegas, so I cook a ton of um, Mexican and Central American food because that's what we have everywhere here. I grew up eating it. So um, yeah, I'd love to see you guys' recipes. I'd love to try things out. And with that, until next time, Keep on gaming and uh, keep on eating. Bye. Turn around, I can't see your face. Tell me where did you go? Was it something I did, something I said that made it all fall down? Baby, I need to know, cause I'm losing my faith. And the more I give, the less I get.